How to Read a Research Article Reading a research article doesn't have to be arduous, laborious, strenuous, hard. In the beginning, upon finding a suitable article to fit your needs, the first thing you might be faced with is a page count that would make a Stephen King fan cry. Although it might seem daunting, if you know what you're looking for, the journal won't seem as intimidating as you wade through it. All articles are not created equally, and headings, layout, and even the language used in research papers vary. These can be a determining factor that can make some studies seem only slightly less unapproachable than being a ring-bearer marching into Mordor. But reading others can be as comfortable as stepping into your favorite pair of slippers. A key element to knowing if your journal will work for you can be found at the beginning of the paper by way of an abstract. The abstract is like that flirty girl at the office that just has to spill all the spoilers to your favorite show before you get a chance to get to it. Although not all articles include an abstract, if yours does have one, it will tell you factors integral to the study. For example, in Marwick and Boyd's Networked Privacy, How Teenagers Negotiate Context in Social Media, and Tangan and Maryland's Cyberbullying Prevention, One Primary School's Approach, the abstracts give information such as the purpose, the form of data collection, participants, and even findings or recommendations. The things found in a given abstract might vary, but it can give you a very good clue as to what kind of study was conducted and possibly if the article will be laid out well. Although this seems like a veritable gold mine, the academic buck doesn't stop here. You have to dig deeper. Reading between the lines. Once you've gotten over the initial shock of a page count higher than Tommy Chung, you might find yourself lucky enough to have chosen a journal with large pictures or diagrams which take up large sections of the page, like in Simple Tips for Helping Students Become Safer, Smarter Social Media Users by Agosto and Abbas, which starts with a beautifully colorful title page. Pictures and diagrams can really help illustrate what an article is talking about, which can aid in comprehension, especially if your article's intended audience is a tenure review board or another academic institution where it's expected that they use language that only Shakespeare would understand. You also have to be careful here because although tables, figures, and graphs leave less actual text for you to read, they are unfortunately frequently used to illustrate the results of different types of data analysis in some form of technobabble. Often this is unintelligible and confusing to the typical reader, so don't feel simple if you don't understand them. Most of us don't. Full paragraphs of complicated mathematical formulas of data comparison are taken up in bonds following your friend, social media, and the strength of adolescents' parasocial relationships with media personae. Without any explanation to what the symbols represent in the text or tables, this is where we choke back the tears and smile and nod as we continue to read until we come across something closely approximating the English language again. Unraveling the Mystery Fillers aside, great bits of information can be easily found in any academic journal with its salt. A dictionary or thesaurus is something you might want to keep on hand because you can always tell when a researcher has used one to create a highly knowledgeable monstrosity of highfalutin and superfluous language. There's no shame in having to look something up to help you understand a paper better. Unless you're Chuck Norris. He's not afraid of big words. They're afraid of him. Using a pencil to make notes in the margin or a marker to make important information stand out as you go can really be the highlight of the whole experience. As you read through, you should be able to pick out the key elements to any study. Keywords or definitions or relevant terms. Theories that support or state ideas relevant to the study. The purpose or aim, usually guided by a statement to prove or a question to be answered. The type of study and how it was conducted. The participants, this can be age, gender, or more defined things like racial or socioeconomical demographics. Usually the location of the study is also mentioned. Data collected and how it's analyzed. And the findings and recommendations. If you're lucky, they'll come under headings or subheadings, which will make them easy to find. If not, get comfy with your article and a cup of coffee, because it might be a while. 
It's also worth mentioning that all articles are not created equally. With a poorly written article, you might find yourself doggedly searching for information for hours and coming up as empty-handed as a toddler looking for an Easter egg hidden on the top shelf of a bookcase three hours after Aunt Ethel secretly already ate it. The end is near. One thing I would caution you against from the beginning, though, is skipping to the end. If you're one of those people who flip to the last chapter of a book to read an ending to find out if its story is any good, you'll be sorely let down. All research is finalized by a comprehensive bibliography, works cited, or section of references. So if you jump to the end, you won't have learned anything about the study except how hard the researcher worked in order to present it to you. But when you come across it organically, nothing beats that rush of excitement you get when you're trudging close to the end of an article with half-glazed over eyes and you realize that the last four pages are all references. It's these last pages of beauty that make that 22-page article like Stern and Audlin's Constructing Dysfunction, news coverage of teenagers and social media, seem like a much more manageable and less cumbersome 18. Yes, Seeing that magical word that starts with an R when you're not expecting it is like getting a surprise bouquet from the husband or that one extra holiday present that never got wrapped because it's either out in the driveway with a shiny new paint job or made entirely out of bacon. To be fair, although it's the length of an article that normally first shocks or scares readers new to research design, it isn't nearly as important as how well the information is presented or the validity of the study as a whole. But that's for an entirely different presentation.